Hello everyone, my name is Arohi and welcome to my channel. So guys, in my today's video, I'll talk about Swin Transformers. So the Swin Transformer architecture was introduced in a paper titled Swin Transformer Hierarchical Vision Transformer Using Shifted Windows. This paper was published in 2021. So the Swin Transformer built upon the success of a Vision Transformer architecture. However, the Vision Transformer models suffers from limitations when it comes to handle a high resolution images. So Swin Transformer outperform Vision Transformer due to their ability to effectively handle large images with lower computational complexity. So today we'll understand what are Swin Transformer, we'll see the architecture of Swin Transformer, we'll see how different layer works in it, okay? So let's start. So this is the architecture of Swin Transformer. The first step is patchification, means the input image will go to the first layer which is where we are performing the patchification, we are dividing our input image into a patches. So suppose if the input image size is 224 into 224 and the patch size is 4 into 4, then we are going to have total number of patches equal to 3136, means you will have 56 patches per row and 56 patches per column total number of patches will be 3136 as you can see here okay so once you're done with the patchification then we will go to the linear embedding layer the linear embedding layer in the swin transformer is a technique used to convert the input data into the format that can be processed by a transformer model okay so images are made up of pixels but transformers works with sequence of tokens all right so therefore what we need is we need to convert the images into a sequence of tokens and uh, this is where linear embedding comes into play linear embedding uh, is a process for converting the image pixels into a numerical representation or in a vector okay so these vectors are then fed to the transformer layers okay transformer model layers as input okay so once the image is converted into sequence of vectors using linear embedding it can be processed by the attention layers of the swin transformer blocks okay now let's talk about swin transformer blocks so the swin transformer block consists of two subunits you can see this is the first unit and this is second unit okay so each subunit consists of normalization layer followed by attention module and you can see that the in first unit the attention module is different and in second unit we are using different attention module okay we'll discuss about them in a minute okay so after the attention module we have again another normalization layer and then we have a multi-layer perceptron layer okay so now the first subunit uses a window multi-head self-attention layer okay while the second unit subunit is using a shifted window multi-head attention layer okay now let's understand both the shifted window and the window multi-attention self-attention layer in detail okay so uh, before moving to this how let's see how this multi uh, this multi head self attention layer works in uh, vision transformers what happens in vision transformer mm -hmm. how this attention mechanism work in vision transformer so basically it calculates the relationship between each patch and all the other patches in the image okay and this approach has a computational comple complexity meaning it becomes inefficient when we are going to have high resolution of images okay because each patch we are uh, comparing the each patch with all the other patches in the image okay so when we are working with high resolution images this will be a uh, 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 difficult to handle because the computational complexity will be there okay so to address this issue, the Swin Transformer uses a window based multi self attention layer. Okay, now a window is simply a collection of patches, and attention is computed only within each window. Okay, so for example, a window size of 2 by 2 patches 
and window based self you know uh, how let's suppose if the window size is 2 by 2 patches that means we will compute the attention on the basis of those four patches which are there in that window okay so let's take another example suppose we have a feature map of size 8 by 8 okay which is evenly partitioned into 2 by 2 windows and the size of each window is 4 into 4 okay m is equal to 4 size is 4 so each window contains 16 patches so we'll calculate the attention inside these windows means one window will have 16 patches so we'll calculate the attention on the basis of those 16 patches per window okay so this window based self attention cannot provide you know connections between the windows so you can see like it is only calculating the attention on the basis of the patches which are there in one window but how we will see the connection between the patches okay so uh for that um, we will use shifted window multi attention layer okay so to know to provide the connections between the windows while maintaining their computational efficiency shifted window partitioning approach is proposed in the paper okay so in this shifted window partitioning approach we displace the window from the regularly partition window okay so we are displacing it so the shift size is 2 how much displacement will be there with the size of 2 so in the uh, so for example if the m is equal to 4 okay so that means it will be 2 the shift size will be 2 okay so after shifting the window by 2 by 2 we are having a total 9 windows okay but previously where we used this window self attention layer over there we were having only four windows but now we are having nine windows now what we want is we want to have only four windows for that author suggested another technique called cyclic shift to reassemble these nine windows back into the four windows so now let's understand what is cyclic shift okay so again we are assuming that we are having a feature map of size 8 by 8 okay and we have a window of size 4 by 4 we shift it two times to the top and two times to the left and we will have something like this now we have a lot of blank space right you can see here we can uh, you know zero pad it but what we will not do that instead of that instead of shifting the windows let's shift the patches we will shift the patches using cyclic shift okay so to understand this cyclic shift concept let's let's consider one example and then let's understand it suppose you have four areas a b c and d like this okay now let's see where these areas would be after shifting okay so shifted area d we will shift what we will do we will shift the area d two times up and two times left and here this is how it will look after shifting okay now we want to shift the area a two times top and two times uh, left but there is no space on the top okay so it will appear at the bottom right of the image okay so same way area c and d will be shifted like this so this was our original patches and after cyclic shift these are our shifted patches okay now that we have uh, you know now we have shifted patches we can define the windows on windows now okay so we have some patches you, over here you can see we have some patches within each window we can pass these windows through msa which is um, masked msa in this case to produce an output okay so why we are using this masked msa over here so the reason is because if you just look at the second window over here okay so there are some patches that you know that are uh, adjacent to each other while in the original patches they are at different locations but after shifting they are adjacent to each other okay but to 
what 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 we want is we don't want to be patches look like this right we want the patches to be to like the patches which are, uh, how they are in the real you know uh, re real position okay to solve this we define some sort of mask mechanism okay and in the end we will shift it back to the original patches location okay and we have that once we shift the patches at the original location so we can use those patches for our you know rest of the neural network okay so this is how window multi head self attention module and shifted multi head self attention module work okay so now the other thing is there is patch merging now instead of processing all the patches individually throughout the entire network swin transformer selectively merges the adjacent patches to capture global information effectively okay so in swin transformer patch merging is performed hierarchically in multiple stages okay each stage consists of a transformer block followed by a patch merging operation and the patch merging layer merge four patches okay so uh, with every merge both the height and the width of the images are further reduced by a factor of 2 so you can see in stage 1 the input resolution is height of the image divided by 4 width of the image divided by 4 okay but after patch merging the resolution will change to height by 8 and width by 8 okay which will be the input to the next stage and for stage 3 the input resolution will be height by 16 and width by 16 and for the fourth stage we are getting uh, we are providing the input to fourth stage is height by 32 and width by 32 so how this size is getting reduced let's see that so split the image into 2 by 2 and in each group stack the patches depth wise then combine the stacked groups okay so the merging operation take four neighboring patches and concatenating them along the channel dimension so this effectively downsample the input by a factor of n and in our case n is equal to 2 2 means each group consists of 2 by 2 neighboring patches okay so this is how the it will reduce the size of the image every time okay so finally once you now you clear about patch merging so finally we can have a task specific head suppose we want to perform image classification so for the image classification we just look at the final output at the last stage of the swin transformer okay and pass it through the linear layer like vision transformer which is just a single uh, you know a simple multi layer perceptron okay so it provides you a class score for image classification okay but guys in case you want to do object detection or segmentation task then you need output of all the stages of transformer okay so so we will be having you know you can say that we will be having features from different stages with different resolutions okay so how different resolution because in the first stage the path size would be uh, 4 and then we are having path size 8 then we are having path size uh, 16 and then we are having path size 32 every time resolution is increasing okay so we can say that algorithm will learn to work with different scales so for object detection and image segmentation we provide um output of each stage to the our task specific head if it is a you know object detection task or a image image segmentation task okay so this is how it works in guys there are four variants of this in transformer tiny small base and large and the difference between all these variants are like parameters like the c and the number of layers okay so you can see here that all these models have different number of layers and the parameters and that's it guys this is how this swin transformer the basic idea of swin transformer i have explained you today so in my next class i'll show you how to perform image classification and then we'll see how to perform object detection using swin transformer so i hope this video is helpful thank you for watching